And we're back with the stories of this week, sponsored by Pony Express. Check out the community edition and turn your Nexus 7 into a lean, mean pen testing machine. For all those hard to reach places, there's Pony Express. Visit them on the web at ponyexpress.com. And by Black Hills Information Security, the leaders in penetration testing and active defense. Email consulting at blackhillsinfosec.com to request a quote today. And I'm here, and we have a very special guest to help us out with stories for this week. Due to popular demand, we've brought back the nun, the one, the only, none other than Michael Santar Colangelo. Michael, welcome back to the show. I was so Thanks, excited man. about your appearance on the show, I grew a beard. Just in, like your, in your honor. Thank you. You're, uh, you're growing up to be a fine young man. My, you know, my, <laughs> dude, my beard is more gray than yours. I don't know where we stand age-wise. I think it's pretty similar, but mine's I hit 40 gray. this summer. I'm 38, so, so yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I've got a lot of gray hairs. My kids love to point them out to me. Yes. And they're the ones that are usually the cause of those gray hairs, which yep. is kind of ironic. I'm my, explaining that to them. <laughs> my wife does the same to me. Then I turn around and said that, tell her that she has more gray hair than I do. And she started growing gray hair in her 20s. <laughs> and then I sleep on the sofa. Yeah. <laughs> and then I sleep on the sofa. Yep. I I had a story in here that I was – there was a quote I wanted to read from it. And I, I wanted to – I wanted to start with it, and then, of course, I lost it. I'm going to find it because I thought it was very a good way to start off the conversation uh, here on the show. Let's see if I can find it here. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I thought it came from Dark Reading. Ah. A winning strategy must patch, should patch, can't patch. Now, what I thought was interesting that I wanted to start off with a kind of a topic for discussion is in the article and I quote threat actors are only after 2% of the network they use the other 90% to exploit that 2% then the author says when you view the challenging patch problem it becomes obvious that not every machine or patch should be treated with an equal sense of urgency mm -hmm. how do you guys feel about that statement I agree you agree I agree, I agree. Mike I think it's oddly specific. Yeah, two percent. Two percent is very specific. Yes. Right. And now I, 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 don't, I don't know, know if I necessarily agree that. with that, agree with the exact figures, but whether it's two percent, three percent, four percent, five percent, it's a small, much smaller it's, percentage. It's, it's much smaller. I I kind of disagree that I mean if if you say that the attackers are after a much smaller percentage, so to protect that much smaller percentage of systems, um, that means that there's another. 98% of the system which I have to protect and therefore I need to prioritize would argue that but if you're protecting that 98% so that they don't use it as a jumping off point to get to the 2% doesn't that mean you need to protect the 98% like all the same and not really prioritize or do well, we you know it's it well right? here's an interesting thing because I'm, I'm, I'm reading this again this is the first I've seen it and I, and I look at it so here's the second part to that quote but I'm, I'm just going to emphasize it again. It becomes obvious that not every machine or patch should be treated with an equal sense of urgency. Well, I actually agree with that. With yeah. that I mean, on its, its own is, is good, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, it's – so I guess the question then is do we know the, the small percentage that the, that the threat actors are after? And I think what you just raised is an interesting question. We, we struggle with this in the first place, right? But if mm -hmm. we can go to our executives in the business and say, hey, what are your priorities? By the way, if you ask it that way, they almost never know the answer. And, and that's not that's, – that's just because th they're running the same types of conditions that we're running in. So let's say we, let's say we figured it out. We sat down. We had a whiteboard, a couple Jack Daniels cocktails, and, and we got it all figured out. I guess the now the bigger challenge is if we go and protect what we just determined was a priority, is there some other system that could be exploited against it? Well, then we're still screwed, right? I mean, that's essentially your argument. Even yeah. if we prioritize yeah. it, if we don't worry about the rest of it, what's going to happen to us? That's an interesting challenge. And now, I'm, so now, what I, I'm sorry. Now like, that, but now what I come back to is all the time in my head when I read stuff like this is, okay, I've got all these different systems and there's all these different priorities and I've got these really super critical systems that house a super critical data. I can't help but think, but at the end of the day, there's some person's laptop that – their job it is to access that super sensitive software. And that person's laptop inevitably 
gets is stolen out of the trunk of their car. Either right has poor security controls or is allowed to browse the internet. Now, if you paid right. attention to the news this week, you saw mm-hmm. that Forbes.com yeah. had exploits on it to exploit an Adobe Flash Zero Day. Yes. So, like, when I think about that, that someone's desktop that accesses sensitive information also accesses the internet, which has zero days for software that they run. All of this other stuff about segmenting, about protecting the 2% is complete bullshit because the scenario that everyone uses is they're going to attack the endpoints and get access to the sensitive information. God, and that makes me want to cry. I am. I'm really wound up uh, this week. Who's been feeding you drinks? <laughs> or, or they're going to, or they're going to attack accounts. Right, or they're gonna, or they're gonna do whatever. You know, the thing that we keep fixating on is, is what are they gonna do to attack? The answer is whatever they can, mm-hmm. whatever yes. they need, and and the more determined they are to get you, the, the more patient they'll be, the more things that they'll try. But they're not gonna go with their great stuff first, not not if they're not if they're disciplined. So I mean, no, that's interesting. Yeah, why would you why would you burn O'Day? Yeah, <laughs> if you've got MSO eight hundred sixty seven, the target has to be worth burning your O'Day for, right? right? If some nation state is paying you a zillion dollars, you're going to use your O'Day, right? <laughs> or uh, unless, it's, unless the unless you don't need to. Unless, well, well, yeah, no, that's I, a good point too. I, right? I agree. unless fishing works. Unless fishing right. with an <laughs> Adobe Zero Day that you know isn't really fishing a, would never yeah. work, <laughs> or not even a Zero Day, <laughs> and Adobe vulnerability works right. <sighs> M- M- MSO, like eight, MSO 8067 too. still works, I've heard. Uh, <laughs> yes. And maybe but MSO 5011 might work oh for God. a long time, but too. That's yeah. my, but that's also my argument <laughs> <You're old>. against, <laughs> against segmentation. Is people say, well, we need to segment our data, and we need to segment our networks. And I'm always, as the attacker, I'm like, I don't care how you segment. I'm yeah, going to find out. the person that but has access to the sensitive information and I'm going to exploit their system but it's and I'm going to get access to that because in order to do business, people need to access that level of information. Right. I'm going to exploit how you do business and I don't care how you segment, but, how you but categorize. But if you've segmented your environment virtually, physically, however you've done it, and you, mi- I know that I'm in fantasy land now. I'm, ri- I'm riding my <laughs> rainbow farting unicorn through the skies. Oh, I love mint candies. Um, <laughs> but if you have a properly segmented and rainbow. monitored network, there are things which are abnormal within a given segment that will help you mm. discover and respond quickly. And it's, and it's not going to stop a determined attacker. And so what if, it'll do if you've got is it'll also it allow you to prioritize. Right. It'll. Uh, it also makes it so that you can say, well, at least we got screwed by smart people. <laughs> right? I, mean, can, can, right. Right? I mean, let's be really brutally honest about where That's we are. That's true. But it's... Um, but it, I would argue it, that to, to stop the... St- or at least you're not going to stop the really smart people, right? You're going to detect the really smart people. You're you don't necessarily need mm. segmentation. You need what you described in your scenario, Jack, as monitoring. Right. And behavioral and monitoring, so monitoring, monitoring But the problem the is system. if you don't, and it doesn't necessarily have to be copper or fiber jammed into a box that physically. But if you don't have the ability to say, this group of machines does this behavior and anything yeah. outside of this behavior is abnormal. Right. And I get that that's not always easy. I get that I have a skewed perspective because I go into a certain company's evaluation license uh, portal and write licenses for a lot of really cool software mm-hmm. uh, without, you know, because it's what I do. Uh, I get that that's hard and or expensive, mm-hmm. uh, but as long as I'm riding my fucking unicorn, let's, you know, <laughs> talk. Oh, by the way, hello, Michael. Yes. Make sure you wear your top hat when you ride nice your unicorn. You. It's, you know, it's it, funny, Jack, I, is um, I was basically going to set you up for that. I knew where you were going to go with it, but I agree with it. I, I, you know, the thing I look at is to say, we, I was thinking about this earlier today, we keep trying to look at singular solutions. Oh, I know the answer. It's patching. Mm. Well, that's part of the answer. Well, what else is there? And you know, the thing I keep looking at is detection, because because you know, and I was I was actually going to ask you guys about this because I know at least Jack, you've got some experience here. He lists the can't patch, and you know, I, I, what's interesting to me is this almost feels like the fantasy land. Let's go back to how many people are patching right now, um, and and how long does it take them to go from the availability of a patch to installed and tested. And let's <laughs> Wait so let's long. say in the fantasy that they're actually testing it. So, either so, way, that either that oh is still man. way too long. Uh, testing testing means a, a, testing means blasting it out to a bunch of users that if break. they don't 
go down. Da- when hey, they go hey, down, they don't there, bitch as much as everyone is, else. And if, and if no nobody complains in an hour, <laughs> yeah, there's no monitoring system as uh, effective as a pissed off end user. Right. You know, <laughs> I'm sorry, yes. Michael. I said end user. I'm sorry, but I'm as sorry. as someone trying to accomplish their down. job, and you getting in their way because of that stupid security stuff we care about, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, but it it, it varies, I, I, Michael. I know you talk to a, different people. We talk to different people. Every now and then we talk to people where we feel like, hey, this is possible. And then you talk to somebody who says, we're going to scan for vulnerabilities no more than quarterly because we're never going to patch more than quarterly. (laughs) Right? I mean, we're going to patch quarterly whether we need to or not, or at least we're going to tell the feds we patched quarterly. But, you know, that that annual scan, that annual scan, and we use WSUS for scanning. Or, you know, you you know. we use Secunia uh, PSI. We, we abuse the personal use license in our enterprise. You know, th- those people, and uh, I, feel, I, I don't even feel bad for them. They're, they're people that are trying that I feel bad for. Well, so then here's the other part to that conversation, and it's interesting how these things, the, the paradigm keeps happening. So if you say, well, I'm going to monitor, great. Well, how quickly will you detect that something's awry? And then when you detect it... Oh, wait, it, wait, wait. we got to watch this crap? I know, it's crazy, right? <laughs> well, hey, you got wait. me up on the unicorn now, and I'm, I'm right. enjoying the ride. <laughs> but, but then the next question... <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> uh, yeah. I the never next question that. is, <laughs> and when I detect something isn't right, how, how properly do I respond? Forget and how, how quickly. quickly. Well, yeah, all right, add how quickly, right? So, so there's, I there's have a, a press release things. in a folder that blames North Korea. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 yeah, done. You should have three, right? Blame Russia, blame China, blame North, North Korea. Korea. That's right. Send all at the same time. Send all three. At the same time, see which one gets traction. Now wait, Mike. I thought you had just completed your workout, and you're going to have the '80s sweatband and the I '80s know. wristbands and leggings and all that stuff. Yeah. No, I got the leggings on still. Oh, oh you know what? Go down that far. I can't <laughs> see it, and that's totally okay. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> Wow. <sighs> okay. Well, I, I thought that article would definitely spark some debate, which it, it certainly has. Um, Michael, did you read um, I don't Gunnar know. Peterson's blog? Oh, yeah, <laughs> I did. Uh, the year the security dog caught the car. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> when did that happen? It's <laughs> funny. Uh, and he, um, he, he points out that... Uh, it's time for a change in InfoSec. If you've spent any time in the business, you've spent hours trying to get people to care about security. And now, um, we, some of us at least, try to calm people down about security because they watch mainstream, they watch Scorpion or <laughs> CSI Cyber. Um, and uh, worry about the wrong, <laughs> and they worry about the wrong things. And so we have to, to refocus. But it's it's a good, well, it's, it's pander to him, but I mean, it's Gunnar Peterson. It's obviously a good, insightful, thoughtful post. I, I thought it was kind of shiny and happy. Like, we're making progress, is what Gunnar was saying. I, I, in my, even so the in fact my that you read take, it and, and didn't vomit instantly, Jack, well, I was kind of surprised I, about I that. I took it as a different, um, because I, I see that we have an opportunity to make progress. And I mean, they're, okay. they're, I mean we're, being, we're under attack continuously from all sides. That, you know, Congress could change CFAA. And and make all of us criminals, but um, we we have some potential for for moving forward. And um, just for when Chris asked for a raise, I wanted to have a picture of evidence as he's lounging in the guest area. Sorry. And, <laughs> now and, it's making you know, head there, there are a couple of me. things that you know that appeal to me personally. Like he he calls out five guys. You know, he's mm-hmm. like, you should do less, but do it better. It's like yeah. You know what? I I can't get. Wait, a, why does he call out Five Guys? Because they do le- they do less and they do it better. Five yeah, there's guys, no onion rings at Five Guys. Yeah, what do right. they serve? They, they serve French burgers, fries, they, they and, burgers fries. and hot dogs. And hot yeah. dog. and have you had their hot dog with bacon and cheese? Uh-huh. Oh, so, so here's good. this bucket. There's this complex list of things that you can do, but you can have burgers, fries, dogs, hot, hot dogs, and with there are, bacon and cheese. And there are a couple <laughs> of variations, and you can mix and match things. That's it. You can't get a salad. Nope. Right? There's <laughs> Unless it involves a hamburger, <laughs> right. French fries, fries hot dog. You're, you're, you're not getting you a salad. You're not getting, you know, apple. You're not getting 
um, you're not getting apple pies or fruit pies or shamrock shakes. They do burgers, fries, dogs with an interesting selection of condiments that you can pile now, on them. Now, see, uh, I'm going I'm to do an, an, an odd corollary here because what about Taco Bell? No, no, hold on. Because they gonna, only have a limited number of things in that kitchen, and they make yeah, a like billion different t- things. They're like 12 ingredients, and if you if you want to understand the complexity, like Taco Bell is a good no, no, example let's go back for to password five guys. management. Right really? in the in the, the because the number of permutations that a certain character set yes. has because Taco Bell's got like what eight ingredients and they make four thousand things from it because yes. that's eight factorial or whatever the hell that is. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mike, I want to turn over to you. Your <laughs> I want wow. you to provide an analogy <laughs> Drink to more, your Jack. fast food place of choice and security. Go. <laughs> the you know the craziest thing is it's uh it's five guys. I, I don't. I'm not always public about this, but I have celiac disease, which means gluten for me is out. And it's not a lifestyle choice uh, as much as it's, a, it's an absolute requirement. You mm-hmm. know what's great about Five Guys? Not only do they keep everything really simple, but all the, all the buns are on a completely separate grill. Right. So I can walk in there and, the, and, and I'll say, oh, can I have that in a bowl? And they say, yeah, absolutely. And, the, and a lot of them now will even say, is that an allergy? Now, technically what I have is an autoimmune disease, but you just smile and nod and go, okay. They're great. They re-glove. They do all sorts of fantastic things for you, but it's a place that I can take my family and I can get a decent burger and fries. And that's, no, they're, they're great. And they're great when I travel. So, no, look, I, you know, Jack, I skim this and, um, and I love it. It's, uh, you know, I mean, <coughs> it's it's very much right. My bias is these are the same things that that I talk about. So you know, it, it's it's great. I I completely agree with a lot of this. You know, when when you, the thing that's kind of sticking out at me is that the security teams need to pivot. They need to do so quickly. No, oh, that's interesting. But but in terms of the, we've got to lock it down and figure out what we're going to be really good at. You know, one of the things I started asking, and and this is broader for technology, about two or three years ago, is I'd say, hey, what are your top five priorities for the year? And it's fascinating the number of people who go five. Oh, I got like 25, I got 30. And I always say, how can you be good at 30? And they would look at their shoes and walk away. Huh. And, and you know, but let's go back to it then. The five things that we need to be really good at need to also match up to what the business needs us to do. Not just what they want, but what they, what they need, which means part of this is, right, it's transformation. Transformation's hard. It, it's hard changing yourself, let oh, yeah. alone changing an entire organization. So, embrace I mean, the this, change. Embrace this it. is great. Well, and recognize it's going to be a little uncomfortable. Uh huh. So, I'm oh, sorry. Do we want an intern to go to Five Guys? We can, just, if you can, instant message your orders. <laughs> oh, oh, are we not? Yes. Doing, are we not yes. doing that? <laughs> Big burger, cheese, double cheese, green peppers, all the way. Green fries. peppers, raw onions, hot sauce. Hmm. <laughs> Okay. Bacon. No more talking about fast food during this bacon. segment after we've had cocktails from Jack Daniel because it's bacon just going to totally cheese, derail the conversation. <laughs> grilled onions and, and barbecue. Uh, oh, I love the giant signs that say they may have peanuts. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you have a peanut allergy, avoid Five Guys. Good point. Um, so there was an interesting article on Microsoft packing more CVEs into fewer security bulletins. We've already blown the like PG thirteen, right? Yeah, um, I'm not going to tell you no, Jack. If you <laughs> feel that strongly that you must curse, then by as, all means, and I think curse. it may be the same curse that I'm thinking of because, as as someone who has defended Microsoft over the past decade as they've made, decade plus, as they've made dramatic improvements in security, both technically and culturally. Um, Let me just say, fuck Microsoft. (laughs) (laughs) Depending on what you do for a living and what lists you're on, um, every Patch Tuesday just unleashes a round of horror and so the latest one we've talked about this before they've stopped releasing advanced notifications yep. uh, depending on what you click there's less and less information if you like run windows update manually on a laptop and uh, it says do this and it basically says this is a security issue that's all it says and you click a link and it goes nowhere because it takes them 
Mm -hmm. eh, a few hours to 36 hours to actually put all of those uh, documents online. If you click the other link, it probably tells you something. It doesn't have a lot of details. There might be, you know, in the case of the Internet Explorer one mm -hmm. for this month's Patch Tuesday, what were there, 41 bugs that got in an IE roll-up? There's an insufficient set of details for you to do it and to, to um, understand what you're doing without just testing it and throwing mm. it at people and My, making them cry. Microsoft has released this patch due to an unspecified security yeah, vulnerability. Right, right. and it, it just makes us crazy. I get that they don't want to tip their hand to the bad guys. Hey, newsflash, the <laughs> bad guys are already owning us. That's why we want yeah. you to give us a patch. Um <laughs> Especially with zero, like Internet Explorer zero day, this solves a zero day. Well, go ahead and tell us, because the bad guys already know. <laughs> um, yeah. Is that resonating with more people now? Because I used to say that years ago, and everyone's like, ah. It depends well, on who you talk to. And the, and the good news is that, thankfully, a, a large number of uh, administrative people who aren't security-minded just pay no attention, and they, they have their routine for patching. Mm -hmm. And they ignore us, and but a lot of us. But then they call us when, or email us, or get on the lists when things break. And again, this month, two different bulletins, two different patches, pointed back to the same MS fifteen o ten. So there were two different updates on my Windows eight one laptop. I'm sitting here in front of. I didn't count on the rest of them. Um, that both pointed back to. Um, MS-1510, which is a re-re-re-re-re-issue. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, actually, I forget. It's three or four. I don't know how many times it's re-issued. I can't keep track. It's multiple things. And the root cause is, let me pretend to be a bitter, old, beardy, curmudgeonly bastard. You don't the have root to cause is true type fonts rendered in the kernel oh. up requiring kernel driver updates to true type fonts. Freaking I, 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 fonts. Uh, fonts. Ah! Um, and I what, hope we can get that as a sound clip. Where, where, <laughs> where? <laughs> we, <laughs> let, let me be your curmudgeonly old man. <laughs> <laughs> where we are now is you know Microsoft, My, Microsoft said <laughs> they were going to dissolve the trustworthy computing group and absorb it into the company holistically and organically and other <laughs> crunchy granola Jesus. fucking so, so, They sound so, like so Apple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you know what they did? They're, they're they, going to inversely they descend their testicles. cut a bunch of people loose and some of them went back and some of them didn't. And um, Microsoft is... Um, uh, Jesus, you know, don't don't make me... Don't make me one of those BSD that. people. Don't make me carry <laughs> a BSD laptop. You already got the beard for it. I, I know. <laughs> so, my, Mike, I'm sorry. Were you Did we have something? a point, or was I just ranting? Well, sorry. I, have, okay. I have an observation and then a question, a series of questions, actually. But the but observation is, right? Fuck, he's got questions. I mean, Jesus. I know. Didn't, I didn't, think, isn't didn't this, you give him did, the brief? Who no fucking invite, questions. <laughs> who invited him anyway? They were drinking, and now he wants to ask us questions. Oh, that's I, the best I, time, no, right? usually. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. You will note, hey, children, if there are any sure. children listening, I mean, you will note that I mean, we use these obscenities in a sentence. Uh. <laughs> Sorry. Now Mike is frozen. In Connor's article, oh, go ahead. it said we need to pivot, right? We, we need to change. We need to decentralize. We need to focus on what we're doing. We need to streamline it all. And, uh, and uh, unsurprisingly, we're a little upset that that's happening. So here's actually my question. We started talking about patches and how people um, have their own patch solutions which probably could stand some improvement at some level. Um, so this is a sincere question because I, I haven't been uh, operationally involved in patching in, in a while now. What does What's the real effect of this? I mean, so let's say they're putting more CVEs in, less details. <clears throat> but if you, if, I mean, if, right, traditionally we would say a patch cycle says get patch, test in lab, roll out, measure. I'm, I, I get, okay, so we're back on the unicorn, but like, Fundamentally, if they streamlined it and it was easier and it was working, what's the what's so the problem? The challenge is more often in my limited experience um, and exposure uh, for people that use custom apps and more entertaining, diverse applications that have more complicated environments. You have there are a couple of things happening. Uh, First is that you get less details, so you have to take it 
on faith and considering that Microsoft has done things that have made uh, insignificant applications like, oh, I don't know, Exchange unhappy lately. All right, so that's a, that's a trust know, there's issue. A, there's a trust issue, and Microsoft has stopped earning our trust, and they've gone backwards after, I would argue, six or eight years of moving forward. Um, the patches are larger, and they're monolithic patches, so instead of me... So they're more likely to break something. So instead of me pushing out 12 Internet Explorer patches, which is a pain in the ass, I, I still remember these. Instead of pushing out 12 IE patches on Patch Tuesday, we push out one. It breaks something, yeah. so I unwind okay. that one, and so now the the you know 15 vulnerabilities that were covered by 12 patches or 41 this month the 15 vulnerabilities that were covered by 12 patches i had to unwind <coughs> two of them in one patch now i've got this blob and it's take it or leave it and so i can now be exposed okay. to three zero days so there the granularity and it's certainly a trade off because when you're running when you're talking about your spouse's computer or your kid's computer, your parents' computers, or, you know, the, the people that you, you support or small business systems, the, there were 12 updates this month. Uh, and if they broke them out, there would be 83 and people would scream. Um, that's a lot easier. And for the vast number of end user, you know, average user, small business, home user, and non-creative users, no problem. But if you've got custom web apps and you have 41 CVEs yep. fixed in a single patch, uh, you you just have to hope it works. And if it doesn't, you have the choice between being exposed to, for argument's sake, you know, 12 critical vulnerabilities and 30 non-criticals. Uh, and so it's which do I do? And because they don't give you the information to deal with it, <clears throat> you can't say, oh, I'm going to do this, this, and this in group policy. I'm going to do this on my... UTM next gen whatever buzzword compliant firewall I've got and I'm going to accept the remaining risk because it's all or nothing. It also then means if if I'm following correctly if we go back to our I'm earlier not even conversation correctly. about about monitoring <laughs> so those details means that in the event the patch blows up or or otherwise I can start I can fingerprint better I can monitor better I know what I'm looking for and what you're suggesting is Lack of details makes that whole balance of the chain more complicated. Right. And I think it's power users right. that get screwed. And hopefully that's us. Those of us in security, hopefully, are the security power users. Does, does hopefully, that work for you? Hopefully, we get way? screwed? No, no. Is hopefully, that? no. Hopefully, we're power users and, and we oh. want that detail. Um, this is really good. What is in this, Jack? There's bitters in here. So, th this is. Um, sorry, Michael. We have to talk booze. Black maple? <laughs> so there is um, two ounces of bullet rye, three quarters of an ounce of port wine, mm -hmm. Ooh. a quarter ounce of grade B dark maple syrup, mm -hmm. and black walnut bitters. Mm. So it is somewhere between a Manhattan but using port and an old-fashioned using um, bitters and maple, maple syrup. Maple syrup. Nice. So that's a good winter warmer. I you like know, it. Rye and maple syrup, syrup. and black mm. walnut mm, and, yeah. and port wine. Mm. This would actually deep. pair very well with a cigar. So on a day when it was 68 degrees out here in sunshine, probably not the right drink for me. Michael, let me just say I love you. <laughs> I know you do, Jack. <laughs> that was the second choice of what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> Similar type of emotion, though. <laughs> um, where do we want to go next? Do we want to talk mobile devices? Do we want to talk? I want to get your perspective on the, the, the 10 million passwords. Did you guys talk about it yet? No, no, but yes. This one's scary for me. Well, I'm, I see both sides of it, so I'm curious yeah, where you guys I, I'm fall. scared for the person that wrote it. For Mark? I'm, I'm hoping he doesn't get sued. Because any here's the thing. Here's the thing. Anytime you write a blog post and you decide to include a section titled why the FBI shouldn't arrest me, I am yeah. worried for you that you are going to get arrested. If you felt the need to put that section in there, 
then it means there's a good chance you might get arrested. So I really hope you don't get arrested. And I think that previous cases have set a bad precedent for that. So you better hope that you've made your donations to the EFF. Don't hey hey don't <laughs> worry it's going to get worse. I mean um, oh Jesus that was my one at a cursory glance. That was my one takeaway from this segment. Why would you so why would you post 10 million passwords? Was it to raise awareness? I I, I want to clarify. I want to clarify. He did not release 10 million passwords. He released 10 million usernames and their associated passwords. Me too. Was it passwords or was well. it password hashes? Passwords. But he does not specify for which service to which they belong. I so, you. so the domains, the domains are obfuscated. Yep. Um, and here's so if I if I were to go to say a local in your town or mine windows user group people would uh their heads would explode at the idea if i were to discuss this with my congressman or senator their heads would explode if i were to discuss it with the techno the technology cyber whatever on the congress critters staff I might get some traction as to understanding that, you know, what's happened here is somebody's put together stuff that if you were like, uh, I don't know, capable of using Google, uh, you could find a lot of, you know, if you crawled, if you paid attention right. to the various lists. And so we can put that there. And uh, what would I do with it? What's the value of this? Um, the value of this is... Pair and the folks that do passwords con could um, could put this together and help people understand common patterns and um, the IT team at the the company that you or I work for or whoever works for could take these and pull the um, pull the ones that are under say twelve characters or whatever dump them into a dictionary and make sure that nobody's using really common and simple passwords. Um, Ten millions a lot though. But back to math, um, back to Taco Bell and math, it, it doesn't take that many characters to get well beyond 10 million. Right. Um, it, it helps people that understand the challenge understand the challenge more. Uh, but it's not simple. And uh, <clears throat> if, so, if you're yeah. amused by idiotic comments from <laughs> really stupid teenagers, you should read the comments to this post. Oh, just say it. It's really bad. That. Don't read it. Don't. I, I, what were we saying, Mike? Well, just I mean, I you know, I I interact with Mark a fair amount on uh, on Twitter, and I I like his stuff with passwords. And Jack knows I've I've spent a decade, whether I wanted to or not, looking at passwords and looking at how as humans we do stuff and looking at the way that we need to make changes and, and stuff. So where I kind of come down on it is on one hand, I go, well, that's actually kind of interesting. I mean, if we have a, a bigger breadth of data, then we can, you know, we can go all big data on it. We can look at, at some of the patterns and that may be useful in how we move forward with it. Flip side, I, I get I actually get where people are, are kind of um, uh, upset about it. As I'm spending more time now looking at, at the, the thing, though, uh, frankly, I, I kind of wish that he had separated himself from the Barrett Brown case. I, I think that's a horrible example to use in this. Um, and I, you know, I, I think they're I think they're two different things. And, and one of the things that I've talked about with some legal professionals, uh, in fact, this was a little bit in the wake of the Sony breach. Was so somebody comes in, uh, they you experience a breach, and they publish your information. It's not copywritten information. Oh, maybe it's copywritten, but it's not. It's not. Uh, it's your trade secrets, right? So you don't really have a, a ton of additional protections on it. Did you just lose your trade secret status? And of course, the, the answer legally is, I don't know. It depends. But the one thing that I took away from the conversation that was really interesting was, once it makes it to a major search engine, it's considered essentially public domain. And once that happens, good luck. Like so, if you remember when Sony was threatening to sue everybody. You know, the short answer is, well, you can sue anybody, but good luck. So, again, I come back and I look at this and I go, you, you, you've, you've gone and you've collected stuff that was out there and, and you've formatted it nicely and you've done some analysis on it and you've released it. Is that security research? Is that, is that, re is that different than actively infiltrating systems and capturing passwords and doing something with it? I think there's a distinction there to it. And, and the Barrett Brown case had, had some 
other stuff that went along with it that, where I, I don't think it's a good I, I don't think it's a good analogy. Okay. Uh, How about all right, so I don't kind of like password it, fluffing. I don't think any <laughs> of us put it in there, but let's let's wow. not mm. talk about releasing ten million passwords. Let's talk about releasing email addresses, street addresses, names, social security numbers. Oh, you mean Google? Anthem? Of <laughs> your constituents. <laughs> oh, God. As form, as Governor Jeb Bush. Jeb Bush did uh, in an attempt at transparency, right? <laughs> he was transparent, all right. Uh, once you put, yeah. And, and, I, I, and I love that. <laughs> that He put the stuff out there. He put the PSTs out there. People started indexing them, finding all the stuff out, and then they pulled them say, and like, yeah, it's too late, guys. Somebody you guys forget how, how the, the internet, internet works. works. Yeah, yeah. It's it's right. you know the, the only thing is that if you lose your website or some you know mm. if you lose your website, your website will be the one site that archive.org and nobody else is freaking indexed. Yes. Um, <laughs> uh, <right>? Yes. <laughs> that one document you were counting on for the paper that you're about to turn in, that sucker's gone forever. Mm. Uh, but <laughs> that that picture with that Dude in Vegas, man, that will never go away. Yep. Uh, <laughs> um, so a hacker finds a vulnerability in Facebook. No way. No. I had something for this. I did. I had. A, oh wait, they can delete your photo albums. God forbid everyone stops. Selfies will disappear forever. Oh my god. Oh my god. No. The humanity. No. 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 no, no, no. That's this, what. Uh, that's what. All the other <laughs> applications are for like. Instagram, Instagram, and uh, this one that Josh talks about all the Snapchat? time. Snapchat, Sna oh, nah, Snapchat, yeah. And there's kick? like is it moose kick, no. kick moose or I don't know. I'm I'm old. What's your <laughs> sign, baby? Moose crossing. <laughs> 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 You've never heard that nice. before. <laughs> nice. <laughs> that's that's dangerous curves ahead. Yes. Wait, casino. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's really all I had there was... Really? It's <laughs> such an atrocity that people's Facebook albums can be deleted. Right? And then well, what about Facebook doing uh, yeah, that good, their whole arguably doing good things? Yeah, what's this whole new Facebook thing that they talked about today about tell us your security sec secrets? And <sighs> How about this, Facebook? Don't make us install another app to use Messenger, and then <laughs> maybe I will respect you for that. Until then, until you merge Messenger back into the main Facebook app, and... Don't, by default, make me look at websites inside the Facebook browser in your app as well. They just do some really horrible things, and I'm very angry at Facebook. Uh -huh. Bastards. Sorry. Close your face up. Pick tab. You're so angry. What is it? I get a little gray in my beard, and I get ranty. I get crunchy. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Wow. Wait, wait till you get the gray in the pubes. pubes. Oh, John. <laughs> <just. laughs> <laughs> you got it in <laughs> stereo. <laughs> I just had to. Sh I just had to shave all those off. If so. there's one thing that I don't want in stereo, it's your guys' pubes. Yeah. Okay. Pubes. <laughs> For 15 <laughs> seconds, will you stop you shaving your nuts? Lord, <laughs> <laughs> this. You know, there are just some places you don't want five o'clock shadow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Why? Why does it have to <laughs> feel like a porcupine? <laughs> 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 so the anthem wow. breach. Oh God! Drink. Can I, Drink. I'm gonna go there. Drink. I'm going there. I'm okay. going there. Damn it! We're going there. Okay. And, and, and I and I have. We wouldn't be security journalists if we didn't say anthem breach at Wait, least six times. Journalists. Three. Journalists. 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 I've done a lot of bad things in my life, but I've never been a journalist. <laughs> Scratch that I'm, off the list, I'm, Jack. You just called I'm us journalists. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry to the few Freelance actual journalists. journalists you can follow the Brian Williams there. model, Jack. We, What's what? that? What? Huh? You can be the Brian Williams model. Think if about Brian Williams could be a journalist, be we're respectable journalists <laughs> <Yeah>. like <laughs> 50 <laughs> times more than Brian Williams. If, if Brian Williams were the worst one that's on TV, that would be a miracle. But he's by far... He, yeah, oh, so you've watched up. Fox News. I, <laughs> I wasn't even going to pick on Fox. I, <laughs> I, I, one of the things I love is people that say it was better in the 50s and 60s. It's like, yeah, well, all of those political opinions you have 
were illegal, you had mm-hmm. to give competing time, and so everybody made sure they went down the middle and told us nothing, and it was pablum, and then we went to the BBC wow, and Reuters to get something bird. else. Uh, but wow. anyway, so how about Anthem? So Anthem got owned, yes. and the interesting thing that I will take out of that is that... Um, the breach started in April of 2014. Are you sure? That's what That's Brian Krebs the claim. reported. Okay. And, right. the, and a the respectable stories, yep. journalist. The stories that have come out are that what? it may be the Chinese, and they may actually be looking for. Um, they may be looking for information to use against specific targets. So they've compromised one, three, ten, eighty million people, um, and they're going to use that for targeting. I, I don't know what to believe. Um, I didn't do the self-promotion thing, but I uh, had a, um, a a ranty blog post this week about the importance of attribution. And for the most part, um, I wish John were on tonight because he and I could argue about attribution. Uh, because for the vast country. majority of people and organizations, attribution is a waste of time. Okay. So yep. I have a quote from Rich Mogul. Okay, we got to wrap it up. Quote, after your lessons quote. learned from Anthem. You don't know what the fuck happened at Anthem, so stay quiet and stop looking more stupid. We don't. The Travelocity gnome speaks wisdom. Speaks. He speaks the truth. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, the Travelocity I, I gnome. I feel like we're yeah. making this big because we want more headlines. Of course. Actually, I, so, I, I so had um, I had somebody pitch me on the Anthem breach, and I I wrote back. Okay, so what do we know about it? What's unique? And what would I go to a security leader with? Their response, uh, not not much yet. All right, cool. All right, thanks. Uh, our our friend Ben Jackson uh, went back and forth with uh, with a company that shall remain nameless, only because I can't remember who they were, and it was just <laughs> beautiful. Um, <laughs> they felt that uh, you know chasing that ambulance was a good idea, and um, you know, hey, listen to, to the PR people in information security that might be listening. Uh, let me just tell you this. Used ambulances are cheap. Buy your own. Stop chasing them. Nice. And on and that you note. you can do cool stuff with them. Yeah. That's Sorry. right. And on that note, we're going to take a very short break, come back, and wrap up the show. Welcome back. Uh, We're back just to say goodbye, really. Yeah. Michael Santar Colangelo, uh, thank you very much for coming on the show again, doing Stories You're of the welcome. Week. We hope to have you back as a regular on this segment. We appreciate yeah, your man. thoughts Anytime and insights. Anytime I can help out. I, you know what? I love learning here. from you guys. Like, the, like When I ask questions, it's just so I can be a little smarter I, about will, it. I love your so. insightful questions because it kind of sparks content from Absol- us. So absolutely. It's perfect. Dude, it's a perfect synergy. Can I use that word? Did I just use you that should, word? You should. I need to only, drink. Only oh, you know what? You're gonna have, you're gonna have to get out of competitive something? intelligence and join strategy. <laughs> so you learn, and you're gonna have to use, to words, use like words like pablum, like, the, like <laughs> synergistic <laughs> compatibility. We have a synergistic compatibility, fucking, Mike. Is what I'm tr- fucking drink. <laughs> <laughs> cyber synergy drink. There we have go. a cyber synergy. That's, That's exactly what we have, Mike. I love it. I like it. Cyber synergy. Cyber Synergy. Someone register that Twitter handle. <laughs> uh, so, Mike, thanks very much, Larry and Jack. A pleasure as always. Jack, thanks for making the drinks. I'm just um, uh, getting inebriated. <laughs> that's, that's that really, one was that's designed to, to inebriate me, apparently. Well, you've had two ounces of cognac plus and two ounces of bourbon plus, and that's a two ounces of rye plus. So. Excellent. I'm going to keep drinking my two ounces. Uh, don't forget, everyone, securityweekly.com forward slash IOT. Go sign up for my embedded device <laughs> security class at Black Cat. It's going to be so much fun. You don't want to miss it for the world. Larry, take us out. Over and out. Uh. Do you know who that is? Ozzy Osbourne? Yeah, I know who that is. No, do you know who that is? No.